topic that's going to be epic. Okay, so I hope me and the panelists can remain friends after this one. My name is Morello Kane, and it is the Hair Debate Show. <laughs> okay, so definitely you want to stay tuned because, again, we'll be right back. The Hair Debate, where we debunk, debate, and discover all things to us. Do not Welcome back. My name is Morello Kane. I am the host of the Hair Debate, the brand ambassador of Morello All Things Hair Dot Media. And let me introduce my panelists to you. I think I'm gonna start over here. Mm. Are we, <laughs> okay, we have start Amanda me. Nicholson. Okay, she's a marriage and family therapist, and Dr. Dunham, that's all the way from Maryland. All right, she is a doctorate of human sexuality. Mm. And D. Hardy, the <laughs> revelationaire, all right, of Gwinnett. D. Hardy of Elevation Hair Studio, how are you today? I'm well in yourself. Ah, I'm going to be okay. <laughs> now, our topic today, I, now, let me just say this. When it pertains to heat damage hair, okay, mm -hmm. now, this is the home of what we debunk, debate, and discover all things hair. So, we're going to talk about it today. Absolutely. All right, the myths and morality of heat damage hair. Okay, so now, you a natural girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so now, what is your feeling when it pertains to heat damage hair? I feel like we, when our hair is heat damaged, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if I should mm -hmm. put air quotes. <laughs> 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 but um, I feel that when you're going natural, that's okay. one of the biggest things people talk about. Oh, Absolutely. my hair is damaged and everything from all that you know all the pressing Absolutely. and everything so i think that's uh, one of the reasons why everybody does the big chop right but they me do. myself personally i didn't do. do the big chop i just let my hair grow out okay um, so i did both I, oh, okay. um, the first time i let my hair grow out but i relapsed back into relaxes and okay. i had to come back okay. so i cut okay. off all my hair now at that point it was not reversible because my mama, when I came home with my hair natural that first time, she's like, "Here's some money. Go get a go get a perm." <laughs> <laughs> All right, mommy, I love you. <laughs> um, but you know, she was not having it. But Absolutely. what you gonna tell me? Go grow your hair. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. That's why I big chopped it and then I put it in braids so she didn't have to see it immediately. Right. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yes. How can I assist? <laughs> Okay. Okay. Now, let me just say, being because I'm a master cosmetologist, so as the heart as well. So now, D, what is your perspective when it pertains to heat damage hair? Well, there's definitely a such thing as heat mm -hmm. damaged hair, mm. and often the consumer comes in when they're going either uh, through their transition of straight or relaxed or mm -hmm. you know perm natural hair, what not the case is, uh, and they equate the straighter ends to damage is equated to damage often but is that truth right right okay okay well now that's what we are going to we're demarking them out okay we're going to go right into the debate of it because let me just say this um now i have to disagree and let me just say now from a master cosmetologist of 20 years a little, a little over, you know. So let me just say that, you know, when it pertains to when we look at what damage means. But I tell you what, before we dig right into that, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your girl Carly Red, and you are watching the hair debate. Don't forget to debate about the hair because it's coming soon. At to us, sitting at you. Welcome back. Okay, so I'm going to just go ahead and just, because I'm about to dig right on into D. Yeah, you guys don't understand him. So so let me just say now, just to explain, okay, when, I, when you say heat damage, you have to look at, from a professional standpoint, of what damage means as from a, and I look at myself, compared to a consumer as a specialist, mm -hmm. like you said, from the, from the head up. Okay, and so... When you look at, when you say damage, then that's hair deplenished of moisture. Okay, and so clients that tend to need a trim and do not receive a trim, 
um, the hair again begins to split. It starts. It 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 um it, it gets worse. Over time, over time, and deplenishes of moisture. There's nothing that you can put in the hair. There are products that are designed to coat the hair, you know, of mm -hmm. keratin and whatnot. But then it gets to a point where you can't even do that to the hair. So the only thing that you can do at that point in time is cut it. Okay. So now that is what damage is. But now, so when you say heat damage for a consumer, because again, it's our responsibility to educate them. Absolutely. Okay, so we can't allow them to bring a term into our domain mm -hmm. and we call it true. We, we can't allow that. So then you have to say, okay, consumer, all right, well, let me just explain. When you say heat damage, now, yes, the hair does um, where it's, it's straighter. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's straighter. But over time, you can train that hair back. You can braid it up. You can um, curl it up. You can train that hair to then work back into a curl pattern because there are different curl patterns on the head. I'm going to stop you right there if oh, I may. Oh, okay. And we're going to go back and revisit a couple of things that you said. <laughs> so starting with the definition of damage. I feel complicit. The <laughs> physical harm caused to something in such a way as to impair its value. <laughs> usefulness or normal function <laughs> that's the definition of damage so when we add an adjective in front of it i.e yes. heat damage no, right we're speaking about something specific that has equated to the damage resulting mm -hmm. from excessive heat okay. let me go in before when i have a client that i'm currently um servicing yes who sustained heat mm -hmm. damage because our tools, as we know, yes. though I look only 21, <laughs> I too do share 20 <laughs> years of experience in the industry. As we know, 450 degrees daily on thin slices or sections of hair yes. equates to stress in it. So to your point, you're absolutely correct. It does remove the moisture component, but consistency and the timing uh, right. is now equated to heat damage because it was a tool set at 450 degrees yes. that removed daily. Daily. Da day okay. And sometimes okay. multiple times a day, okay. depending on the lifestyle, no, no, right? Absolutely. Because absolutely. as we spoke before, society has now told us we cannot go out without straight edges. Yes. Right? Uh, and they so, have. And they have. So now we're adding 450 degrees a day, at least once a day, to these uh, independent trusses. Yes. And we've extracted the moisture. So that particular component of the hair, or that particular section, has now become heat damaged. Okay. Uh, I love your point in that. Okay. So now, my partner, I'm just going to elaborate and just talk about your hair. With okay. you being natural, exhibit A. <laughs> <laughs> Just with you being natural. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, and you get your hair straightened how often? Once a month. Okay, so now would you say that um, now have your curl pattern changed at all from the very beginning up to the standpoint? No. Okay. No. Okay. But that's too because I only stra I go to somebody to get it straightened. I don't straighten it myself. Okay. I don't even own a flat iron. Okay. I own a blow dryer, but I bought it and used it one time okay so i get my hair pressed once a month by a professional okay and once i feel like it i can't wear it down no more it go into a ponytail then it go to a bun then i go back to a professional okay so would you have more than one curl pattern on your head yes i have one at the top and one in the back okay two and different. you can tell the difference between the two mm -hmm. okay okay one is slightly curlier <laughs> Than the other. Okay, yeah. okay. So, Dr. Donna, do you ever straighten your hair at all? Yes, I do. Once a year. Okay, okay. You've never experienced that at all? Oh, I have. My hair wouldn't go back, so I cut it off because I was like, well, you're not behaving the way I would like you to behave, so goodbye. Okay, and so now we're talking about once a year, and then we're talking about once a month, and then the two different curl patterns and whatnot. So now, let me just say this. Yes. To what you were saying, D, straightening your hair 450 degrees 
could be I this and that without the proper protection again daily you would have damage without a doubt but from the consumer standpoint at what they label because again they're trying to educate themselves and mm -hmm. come to us at what they think that they may know which is conforming how we are addressing them in our environment absolutely as a professional and so again I'm just saying that um, from a professional standpoint, you know, when you have um, heat damage hair, that's the plenish of moisture. Because, again, it's like, okay, well, my hair, I'm, I'm, and they won't even work at getting that curl pattern back or whatnot. You know, it's just like, oh, I just see a looser curl pattern and whatnot, and I'm going to cut it off. And I'm like, well, hold up. Let me, as a professional, mm -hmm. assess it. And I'm like, well, no, these are the things that we need to do. Mm -hmm. Is not damage. Okay, now what you may want to consider is heat damage. Okay, and, and because... At said time, though, you're assessing the hair collectively, the entire. So you're looking at, okay, this particular section or this inch and a half on the ends may be lacking, but let's take a more in-depth assessment and what's streaming from the root because we, it's a root cause analysis as a direct result of mm -hmm. your actions. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, follow me now. <laughs> Be it neglect, stress, <laughs> elements, environments, all of those components combined yes. have now resulted in a end factor. Being Absolutely. the tresses, you know, again, being straighter. Because Absolutely. it's not typically a case where there is no pattern or there is no dimension. It's, it's just, it's just what they don't like. Yeah, absolutely. It just is what they it's don't preference. like. And they feel exactly, and they feel that, oh, well, you know what? Well, then say that. Say, say then, because again, when you, again, when you try to th throw, and what I don't like is when you have other professionals that would say, oh, yeah, because it was straight. Well, no, you're not talking about assessing it at all. Mm -hmm. You're not talking about, you know, looking at it, you know, the strand itself and saying, okay, well, I'm seeing that the fact that it's the plenish of moisture. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you so much. And again, this is going to continue to go on. Come right on back because we have more to share on the hair debate. For more shows like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified every time the hair debate has a new episode. Now let's get back to the show. And welcome back. We have a special guest with us in our discovering portion because let me just say this. We need someone that can go ahead and throw some water on this fire. Because I'm just saying. <laughs> and so we have with us today Dr. Nikki Hill of Soka Center. Yes. Yay! <laughs> Lady. Lady. So, Dr. Nikki, and you've, you know, heard the combativeness between the two. Mm -hmm. And so from a professional, you know, we're discovering all things new. <laughs> and so what is your take when it pertains to heat damage hair? Yes, so in my practice, we focus on hair, scalp yes. conditions. We always say healthy scalp leads to healthy hair. Yeah. Now, in the essence of <laughs> all things debatable, um, we also have to understand you have the professionals and then you have yes, the consumers. Absolutely. And the question is what the consumers are doing and what the professionals are doing because the hair in itself is a living, breathing object. And it is. Um, so with heat damage, it's excessive exposure to heat. So there's a lot of different pathways that that can occur and that can have re results, mm -hmm. um, consequences. Yes. So when you have that exposed heat, you have to understand hair starts to burn at 450 degrees. Mm -hmm. And so when we're applying heat on hair that's been recently washed and may still have a little bit of moisture content in there, when you have, my analogy is a popcorn kernel, mm -hmm. you expose okay. that to heat. The popcorn kernel actually has a little bit of moisture in there, water and heat explodes. So mm -hmm. inside that hair shaft, we start to get what we call bubble hairs. That water exposed to that intense heat starts to cause a lot of steam. Mm -hmm. The steam bubbles up inside the hair. And if you can imagine, it starts to break off the little cuticles on the outside of the hair. So your cuticles are kind of like shingles on a roof. Okay. They actually lay one on top of the other. It helps mm -hmm. keep the hair waterproof. So that's where porosity comes in. Absolutely. Yes. So how much moisture we could bring into the hair, how easily the hair absorbs moisture, how easily it lets go of moisture. So if that excessive heat starts causing those little bubbles to starts boil up, causing. Yes, yes, and it breaks off those cuticles, now mm -hmm. we have holes in our roof. Our roof isn't waterproof anymore. 
but also in the essence of moisture, it's not gonna be able to hold that moisture for mm. much longer. Mm -hmm. So that's where it can affect moisture content. But then also, it's where it also can affect our curl pattern. So we have bonds in our hair. So that's what causes that luscious, curly, coily, kinky <laughs> You wouldn't textures. be speaking of the disulfide bond. Those you? disulfide <laughs> <laughs> you better know that information. Look at that so much. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Elasticity. Yeah. And that's what we need. That's what keeps our hair looking good. That's what gives our sheen, our volume. That gives our a uh, juju, right? So we need that. I love that word. So what happens is you can actually break those bonds. You have some bonds you can break with water. Mm -hmm. And that's why yes. some ladies or in gentlemen recognize Absolutely. when the hair gets wet, the curl pattern loosens, and the, they can retain some length. And that's yes. where that shrinkage, shrinkage comes back up them. after the hair dries yeah. because those bonds are tight and they reform. Mm -hmm. So they recreate that coil or that spiral or that, that kink. Yes. So that's what happens. And when we have excessive heat, just like chemical relaxers, it breaks those bonds. Mm -hmm. And if it's too much, it breaks them permanently and they reform mm -hmm. in that straight structure. Mm -hmm. So being a little sufferer from... A little heat damage myself. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're suffering Ooh. from what again, Doc <laughs> Dr. Nikki? Yeah. I too have had a little heat damage. <laughs> <laughs> and it's rough, yes. but you can have heat damage on natural hair, mm -hmm. and yes. you can have it on relaxed hair too, mm -hmm. or chemically processed hair. Um, it just turns into the fact that if those cuticles are affected, we lose yes. porosity, mm -hmm. we lose moisture, which gives the dry, the brittle, dry okay. hair is fragile hair. But also, it affects the curl pattern. So if we start seeing, okay, you know, after you wash the hair, you you want that, you want that back. Yes. You want those curls back. But what happens is you start seeing straight pieces, or you have an area that's like nice and curl. Now all of a sudden, eh, mm -hmm. you know, right. it just loses right. its, its 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 its, its um, intensity of the mm -hmm. curl, and that can be heat damage as well. Absolutely. So. That's my little light. Okay, well, so shine. Dr. Nikki, Love. let me just, mm -hmm. well, in your heard. professional sense, let mm -hmm. me just ask you a question. So now, so now when it <laughs> pertains to you can style a hair and become strained. So mm -hmm. then you can then work the hair into it, you know, you start braiding it up, you can start twisting it out, you can start curling it up, and you can work that moisture back into that hair because the moisture is not deplenished in that area and so you can reconstruct that hair back with the proper conditioning because again it does have some moisture in it so it's not deplenished and then over time you can then get work that hair back to having a curl pattern so we have two things so you're talking about the moisture and the curl pattern yes. so with so the moisture goes back to porosity so we mm -hmm. have like low porosity high porosity naturally natural hair is low porosity the cuticles are not manipulated too much typically mm -hmm. if there's and you know we're throwing out color we're throwing out heat we're throwing out anything even brushing aggressive shampooing things can cause a lot of disruption and damage to the cuticles i mean wind can cause hair to become a little a little damaged uh -huh. so in that aspect when your porosity is affected your moisture is affected so okay. you can do like protein treatments to help with Again, filling up those little holes in the roof, mm -hmm. trying to fill up your little, your little shingles, replace them, or coat them. It's not permanent, and you can hydrate, 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 but you're, the damage is done. But you can okay. try to protect it as much as you can and maintain. That's the where the professionals help those, those consumers. Maintenance Absolutely. of that hair and moisture. And so, so, hold so on, hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. just, so I, <laughs> just so I understand where, where this stands. Mm -hmm. Heat damage not reversible. Okay. Woo. That's what I heard. Well, you, I'm just, you, you can um, you can cradle it and you can you can nurse it. You can nurse it. Mm -hmm. oh. You can try to hold on. So it sounds to me, doctor. But you Nikki, don't necessarily have to cut it off immediately. You, you don't, don't have to. Um, case in point, I, I don't cut my hair. You know, I'm just gonna let it ride. I'm just moisture, because moisture, it, moisture. Because, as because much again, as it's not damaged to the point of like, well, I just have to completely cut it off. Because mm -hmm. because again, when hair is deplenished of moisture, you can even take a curl and curl it to develop a curl pattern. But at this point, you can curl your hair and you will see a curl pattern correct. Not consistently throughout. Like there, yes. I have some straight pieces, I have some curly pieces, I have some wavy pieces. It's like different flavors all in this head. <laughs> but if you curl it with the flat iron, then you can see it still has some moisture to where it will hold a curl. It does, but there's areas where it's breakage. There's okay. areas where it's drier. There's areas where it's tangled. And exactly. that's all goes back to moisture. Exactly. And then it moisture goes back to... Moisture means everything. Uh, mm -hmm.
what you were speaking in regards to in terms of textures, patterns, uh, the reversion or the lack thereof are all behaviors. Okay. Consequently or resulting from, you know, uh, actions. Absolutely. That were not necessarily the most beneficial. So okay. as we know, for every action, mm -hmm. there's a reaction. Absolutely. Ooh. For the fact that you went against me, <laughs> knowing better, you now have to deal with my wrath. So in uh, saying such, uh, yes. you know, those are behaviors. But is there a such thing as heat damage? Absolutely. Are there contributing factors? Absolutely. But it's a behavior. Well, let me speak to that consumer. If you come into my dwelling, mm -hmm. okay, you would not be able to come to me and say, now you can say, well, I think my hair has heat damage. Mm -hmm. But again, I am the professional. Mm -hmm. And so, with that being um, said, I would have to say, Dr. Mm, Nikki, Dr. Mm. Dr. Nikki, what would you <laughs> say in regarding that? Do, would you, do you have anything to share right now before we go ahead and, because I, I think Dr. Dunn is you trying know, to jump over this wants way. to talk. I, oh, so okay. she's like, I, 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 I will give the floor to the consumer. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. The living, breathing. Uh, okay, the okay. living, breathing consumer. I, <laughs> yes, Dr. Dunn. I Donald. would just like to say that, you know, as a person that gets their hair straight once a year, okay. you know, uh, I, I'm with my hair 365 days of the year. Yes. 64 if you're getting it. 64, so yeah, yeah, you know, uh -uh. maybe, uh -uh. <laughs> you know, however, however the things break down, I'm with my hair every single day. I have to style it every single day. So if it is doing things that it does not normally do, yes. would I not understand my own, my own hair? Would okay, I not I be able to say that? At this time, this is what changed. This is what happened, and now things have changed since then. So I wouldn't be able to say that my hair is damaged because it is not acting the way I know it to act. Consumer, are you um, proficient <laughs> when, a, when it comes to the chemistry of hair? I don't think so. So now with that ooh, being said, ooh, but I what? am proficient in the chemistry of my hair. And you you are, can't come in my house. I can't. Like, but, but, now, but now we're want. in my house. So in yes, my but house with my, my profession, with my profession, my license, again, we are taught. And, what and, I hear is my house, my rules. What you guys Ooh, think, but hearing. not all rules apply. We're not taught on just how to style hair. To every okay, if you're going to the right school, then you are uh -huh. truly taught. Okay, you are truly taught about the chemistry of hair and being that being said again being in my house as a professional okay because you, you know that don't fly right well, I just well, want to make sure that we both but I walk on both feet Hold on now. I don't fly here's why I don't fly here's why I don't fly here's why I don't fly I don't fly let me tell you why I don't fly it doesn't fly and because I walk on heels. your your part of your job is also to meet your consumer where they are and you are as absolutely a service right. professional right. as I also am yes you are you are not the professional or the expert on their life because they live with that not thing life, every but hair. Single, yes, not but life, they live with hair. it every single day. Not so life. she would tell you as well, as a therapist, right. the, the consumer, our patients, our clients are the experts on their life. I know everything there is to know about sexuality, about colorism, Absolutely. about sexualism, about how those things impact anxiety, depression, etc. Absolutely. I know that, but they are still the ones that live their lives every single day. You cannot tell someone who messes with their own hair every single day that you know better when you see them once a month. Well, let me just say this. We're not just talking. Okay, so we, we're not, we, we, we know the chemistry of hair, the difference of hair textures. And from a professional standpoint, that's what I'm addressing. Well, I, she I'm able with to you, come so. in and to assess. Well, I, <laughs> the, hey. Welcome back. Oh, this is hot. Uh, you know what? Oh. Mm. Okay, we Dr. Nikki has some things to say because see right here, I can't do. So Dr. Nikki, oh. not not right now. We're gonna have to come back part two. Oh yes, we will. Dr. Nikki. Okay, so now you have some things to share because again, it's not always heat damage. What people may think is Please elaborate. And yes, just to talk about from the consumer perspective and the professional perspective, yes. when patients come to me and a lot of times they have changes in the scalp, they have changes in the hair, they have their perception of what's going on. But that's where it kind of relies on the professional to really be able to explain to them what they're seeing, what they're experiencing, and really understand and learn their texture of the hair. And sometimes it's not a one-time 
you know, session to really learn what's going on with the hair. Sometimes it may take a few sessions. But in yes. regards to Sounds understanding, like exactly, exactly. They have to give some, and you have to appreciate it, you know, <laughs> process it and give it back to them. But, you know, really understanding what's going on with that hair is really important because then that's the difference between whether it's something that can be repaired or something that needs to be managed. Absolutely. And, and again, um, there could be some other issues with the scalp. Absolutely. It may not be what you think it is. Yeah. Ah, I'm just saying. So, okay, so let me just say this. Oh. We are going to, again, take a break. We are going to have to come back for our part two because they ain't ready. And so, <laughs> oh. again, oh, okay. thank you so much. You do not go and grab that out the kitchen because, again, you want to stay tuned. We're coming right back. Thank you. <laughs> and welcome back. Yes. I tell you, ooh, hey, got a little hot in here, but we had to have a little drink. I tell you, and so with that being said, let me introduce the chef of the hair debate, Chef V. Hello, 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 hello. Thank you so much, Chef V, because it got a little hot in here, so you knew we were thirsty. Mm, I heard. Yes, yes, yes. So. Chef V, now what have you prepared for us here? It's a goji berry smoothie. Okay. And in the goji berry smoothie, you have lime, mm -hmm. which is a twist of lime, coconut water with fresh pineapple. Okay, mm -hmm. this smells nice. Oh, now fragrant. the coconut water. Pineapple. You know how you guys would do. You guys mm -hmm. would throw that coconut okay. water on your hair. Won't even want to pull it in, place it in the smoothie. But this I tell really you, really, good. coconut. Mm -hmm. So what's, I like that. Coconut water versus just regular water. Right. It makes a difference. Yes, it's actually pineapple coconut water, so it's, mm, it gives a little really? more flavor. Yes. Yes, it's good. And so you're getting your nutrients from the fruits because, again, it's not always about what you can put on the outside of your hair, but what you're putting inside of your body. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> and just so you know, goji berries, mm -hmm. they're, they're Asian descent. So I they have more um, vitamin A than carrots and more mm. iron than um, spinach. You know, you a little cheeky. That's like your I'm just saying, that's my, that's, that's my territory right there, my stomping ground. <laughs> yeah, that's a more. Yeah. Yeah. Vitamin A is good for the skin, okay. too. You I, actually, yeah, I like uh, that. I have my glow up. You can actually use it on your scab for dandruff. Oh. As well as um, dandruff and um, scalp acne. I learned that by researching. I didn't even know we had scalp acne. But oh, you can yes. actually use oh, it on yes. your scalp. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. and, and let me just say this. If you have more questions about acne, <laughs> that one right there, Dr. Nikki, Hill, that's who you would want to <laughs> talk to. Okay. So I tell you, thank you so much. I absolutely would love this. And again, you guys research this. Okay, understand that it takes much more than just what you can put on your hair. Also, too, what you put on your body. Okay, also, too, mm -hmm. if you have any issues, do consult with a specialist. All right, mm -hmm. again, my name is Morello Kane. It's the hair debate. Mm -hmm. This is the home where we debunk, debate, and discover all things hair. Mm -hmm.